I'm Tim. I'm Anna. This is the Geeked Up Game Review Group, and I'm bringing you guys a review of Force of Will. It came overseas just about seven or eight months ago, I do believe now. Um, and I can't remember what country it came from, so I'm not going to say because I'll probably get it wrong. But anyways, let's go ahead and go over to the tabletop, show you guys some of the cards, and show you guys how to play the game and how to get it set up. And uh, hopefully pull you guys in to being fans and wanting to play and invest in Force of Will. Alright guys, so here we have the box and you can obviously tell we've had it open because I put the dark character and his weapon on the light side and the light character on the dark side. Um, so this character is here, this character is here, all that is kind of irrelevant. Um, so you'll have a starter deck for your uh, dark side and a starter for the light side in this box. Um, and it, it does say English here, so that you'll, if you're at the store, I don't know, I haven't seen it in other languages it's here in America, assuming that it did originate overseas, you might be able to find a copy with a different language. Um, so in the, on the back it shows all the copyright and everything uh, for the game. So we'll go ahead and open this and show you guys what you'll get inside of it, other than what you see here. Just try not to rip the box. So it's going to come with this like little sleeve over it, once you pop that off. Now yours, with it being new and everything, will have all of it sealed into um, packs. plastic packs and everything. And then there's a bonus card on the bottom that is a light magic stone. And I have not used it at all, neither has Anna. So there's a in detail rule sheet that breaks down all the words and gives you like core meanings and everything um, and we also used it as a <laughs> scorekeeper on our life points because you start with 4,000 points now when we show you guys how to play and everything we'll be using a 4,000 oh, using a Yu-Gi-Oh life counter because uh, I found one on the on there for the for the phone, so that was just easier to use that for our life counter. And then they have a quick reference kind of rule sheet, and it breaks down everything, kind of simplified, versus the detailed one of all black and white text. This one has pictures and everything. And here is the, um, it's a, it's a mat. It's player a board. Player board mat thing. And then That's it shows you, one. like, the, uh, Turn sequence. Yeah. There's two of those. So that shows you like where all the different areas are and everything. Um, once you've played it, we only played it one time on the mat and then just kind of remember where everything was. Um, so just to have more room for to use cards and everything. Um, so I will take my character, which was dark, so. So the, your cards and everything will run off of magic stones. So my deck will run off of the fire magic stones. And mine will run off of light. And then there are special weapons for each character. This one's uh, a foil copy, so hopefully I don't get any glare in there. But that's a uh, special sword. For Meldritz, the Flame King. And mine's Excalibur, it's foil as well. Yes. And what's really cool is that it has a zero cost, and you can play it on your character as their special um, weapon, but it's kind of weird that it doesn't have any cost. You would think it would have like a full wheel uh, of something and make it really hard to cast it out there, but it doesn't. So there's other, other special cards that are in foil. Um, this one's uh, Lancelot, the Knight of Mad Demon, as I throw it over the table. So there's the that card. You know, and from a distance, it almost looks like he's carrying a lightsaber because of the way that that blue I just thought, streams across there. I thought there. that too when you showed <laughs> So there's those. So then you'll we'll go ahead and uh, show you guys how to set the game up, and we'll get everything kind of put where it goes, and then explain that. So uh, we'll see you guys in the next segment. All right, so we have everything set up, so we'll go through uh, what everything is. Over here, you'll have your main deck, and in the player sheets, it shows you to have them sideways. 
it's just na more natural for me to have it sitting this way and then have my graveyard over here on the side. Um, but if you wanted to match the settings of the what the board would look like, you would do it this way. A graveyard would be here. Your field area is here for all of your cards and weapons. Your ruler gets placed down here. And then this is your stone deck. And if you're only playing one style of a stone, like all fire or all light, which these two starter decks do, um, as a house rule, we play them face up, but per the rule book, they'll be played face down because sometimes you can mix two different types of uh, uh, powered decks. So for the rule book, it says that you can have 10 to 20 stones and you can have 30 to 40 main deck cards. Um, as this set is, I think it is 30 cards here and it is $10, 10, 10 stones in our stone deck. And then the application we're using on our iPhone 6 uh, is a Yu-Gi-Oh! Life Counter. Because that was the only game that I could remember that would use thousands of numbers. So it's kind of cool. If you guys play Force of Will and need a counter, is that you can use ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. And you can change your life points there. And so on and so forth. So we'll say zero to keep me at 4,000. So you, then you can choose randomly who's going to go first or you can flip a coin however you want to do it you can flip a card if you want face up is one person and face down is another so both players are going to start with five cards in their hand and the player that goes first will not draw a card during their first turn and I drew six so let's put that back now I've got five so we'll say that I go first so I would not draw a card because it would be my first turn um, so let's see. So what I can do uh, to get stones over here for power to power up the cards that I have in my hand, I would rest my character to the side and then that would give me one stone to put into my um, power pool or magic pool, stone pool, stone jar, whatever you want to call it, whatever that area you want it to be. And then I can use that energy to cast spells, deploy creatures, um, equip weapons, and anything that you put out into, the f into play will be here in the field other than your ruler. They will stay down here. Um, that's part of that. So I will use, so I will rest my stone to put out my, you can't even read that, need glasses, my ruck egg, R-U-K-H egg. And it has zero attack, 200 defense, but it has a trigger when it goes to the graveyard. So I play that up front. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back around. And then I would pass the play over to Anna. I would draw a card. And I'm going to rest her to gain a stone. And I'm going to use my stone to play a um, spell. Um, and that's going to be placed face down because it has a trigger ability. And that will be the end of my turn. So then the play would come back to me. I would go ahead and restore uh, my character or any cards that I've used, including my stones. And then I will draw a card. And then for my second turn, I'm going to go ahead and turn this to rest him, get another stone, and let's play. Let's play Genevieve, the Jealous Queen. That's going to cost one fire. So when you're looking at your cards, they're going to have a cost in the wheel of what power it needs to be, and then it's going to have a number down in over next to that wheel. As you can see in that card, it has a four. So what you can do with it only having the fire in the wheel, that means that I have to play four energy, or four stones, but one of those needs to be a fire token. Now there's some cards in my deck that have two fire or three fire and then have like a three number over here. So then that's how that would work. So that, I can't attack with a player that's been um, set out in the field on the turn, but they can defend in their first turn. So basically it's a summoning sickness. So you would have to wait till until it comes back to you to be able to attack with that character. Um, and it doesn't have anything out right now that is 
going to be a threat, so I'll save my spell for my next turn and pass the play over to Anna. I'll draw my card. And I will rest her to grab another one. And I will play her, which costs one. And then she is Percival O, like Percival the Seeker of the Holy Grail. And then I'm going to play another to play Young Knight of Gloria. And they both come in like this, but that's the end of my turn, so I'm going to let Tim go. Yeah, there's nothing in the rule book that says that you have to rest your character when they come into play. Reason being is that you'll have that rested, and then that's going to confuse the player when they go on their turn to attack. Um, because they can, when you have a character rested, say if this character was rested, uh, and I would have the choice to either attack me or attack a rested character. So, leaving your characters unrested and restored, so restored is the correct word to be this way, rested is this way. So to have, so when my characters are restored, she will know that she can't attack them. They, she would have to attack me and go for my 4,000 life, and then I can choose to defend to where if I was rested, she would be able to choose this and I would have no choice but to use that card. So it's up to you on what you want to do. If you want to put it in restore to remember, don't attack with that. And then at the end of your turn, restore it. Um, but just make sure that the, your opponent knows that that's what's going on and you're not restoring cards that aren't supposed to be restored. Uh, so I'll draw my card. I will restore my ruler. I will restore my uh, magic stone. And then I will go ahead and use a stone. Now you will use a stone as Anna did to deploy your card. But then when the trigger happens, you don't have to pay another one for that trigger to, to happen. Um, just let it go as when it for when it triggers. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you an example right now. Um, I've already paid for it to be put out into the play field or into my reserves um, in my holding tank here. So what I can do is I'm going to attack with Genevieve, the Jealous Queen, um, with 200 attack, but that's going to trigger this card that I have here. And that's going to allow me to choose a character that cannot block. So what I will do is I will choose this character that cannot block. So I'll read the text on here so that it's clear <laughs> on what I'm doing. When a ruler or resonator, which are these, these are resonators, the characters you put out, you control attacks. Target resonator cannot block until end of turn. If you control a ruler, a J ruler, which would be the other this side of the card the that would have the actual attack and defense of what the card is, which I don't have a J ruler, this card deals damage equal to its attack to that resonator. So the first half is I'm just making this character unable to block while I'm attacking with Genevieve, the Jealous Queen. So that would take 200 damage to Anna. But I can't block with this one, but I'm going to use this that triggers when a Resonator your opponent controls attacks or blocks. This card deals 500 damage to target attacking or blocking Resonator. If you control a J Ruler, the card deals damage equal to the attack instead. So I'm going, this gives him 500 damage to that character. So that character dies. And this gets discarded. And I'm just going to take the 200 damage. Yes. And this is like a really cool app. That's 20. Oh, no. I was just looking at it upside down. <laughs> I was like, that's only 20. Oh, so never mind. She took the 200 off. So um, if there's other applications out there that you're, you know, you want to use, this is just the only one I knew that would go up to thousands um, was Yu Gi Oh! So. It saves you from writing on the back of your rule book. Yeah, or trying to find pen and paper, so, I mean, <laughs> almost everyone has a smartphone. If you don't, I apologize, but that's the only example I have. Okay, so I drew my card. I'll go ahead and... That's oh, not my turn. It goes to you. Well, you were still attacking. I know, but I can't draw done. a card. Yeah, I'm done. 
Okay. And then this will be discarded. I was thinking when you did that, it was your turn. Um, gonna once again. Tiny bit of confusion there. Get that. And I'm gonna go ahead and pay two to put this. And as long as you have a knight of the round table, this card gains swiftness. So. Okay, so that goes back to the rule of the summoning sickness where you can't attack with a card usually, but swiftness being a key word, which every key word that's highlighted in white or gray or any other word that you might think of is in the rule book. So giving this card swiftness is going to allow that card to attack when it was deployed. And then I'm going to use this again to play another standby. And then I'm going to go ahead and attack with her. And I'm going to block with my egg, because then you're going to kill it. That's going to send it into the graveyard, which triggers its effect. When this card is put into the graveyard, I'm sorry, when this card is put into a graveyard from your field, search your main deck for a fire resonator. Reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle in your main deck. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in here and find anything that runs off of fire, which is in the bottom right hand corner. That's, you'll, that's how you'll know what... Uh, faction it belongs to um, and then this this one says has gears that's just letting you know that that's a gear to, or a piece of equipment that you can use on any ruler those are universal for any char characters um, so there's a specific one I'm looking for which is this guy he's a 1200 1200 so I'll reveal that dragon to Anna let her know that that's the one I chose okay. and I will add him to my hand Alright. And then Anna will continue with her turn. And since this guy has swiftness, I'm going to attack with him, which is 600. But you have nothing to block it with, so... Here. I'll go ahead and do that while you're getting your deck ready. Oh, don't, don't, don't. I did that earlier and I hit the wrong thumb. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm going to leave this guy active. And... That's going to be the end of my turn. Alright, so... So basically these two that are sideways, I can't choose to block with them, but he can choose to attack them. Yes, that's... Yes. Uh, he explained that earlier, but now that it's visual. Yeah. So, let's draw my card. Let's rest you. Rest, or restore you. Okay, so I should have restored everything, but a little out of order. So I rested him to bring in another stone. And play this guy. That's gonna cost two. So I have, to, I have to play at least one fire, showing you this. It's got the fire and the wheel, so that's the fire. And then I have to play two total. So we will rest two of those for him to be able to be deployed. Now with him having the flying attribute, that's going to make him unblockable by any ground units. So Anna's character needs to have flying to block this character. So. And I'm going to... Oh, I'm not attacking yet. Oh. Okay. oh yeah, you can't attack. Unless you have swiftness. Right. He doesn't have swiftness. But we're going to do this. I'm going to use one of my stones to cast Demon Flame. Choose one. This card deals 500 damage to target resonator or destroy target resonator that was dealt damage this turn. Well, you weren't dealt damage. Damage. But I'm going to cast 500 on him. Okay. So then I would pass it to her. She would go and pass it back to me. So that's a big big example of uh, how to play Force of Will, and then there's only one way to win, and that's by dwindling down your opponent's health to zero. So that is how to set up the game, that's how to play on a few turns, and uh, we'll go ahead and go over to our conclusion. Alright guys, so we showed you guys how to set the game up, show you guys uh, some of the mechanics and how to play the game, showed you few of the cards and hopefully you could see all of those cards uh, that we used and played with and everything and saw the stones and whatnot. And uh, this was actually the one game that I wanted to go see the most, uh, this Gen Con. I saw it at 
Toys R Us, I think. It was sitting on a thing, and then I saw the print date on it. So I thought, well, hopefully they'll be at Gen Con. And uh, uh, I was really, really hoping to meet the guys I got to. Uh, the guy that's actually running everything here in the U.S. as far as distribution and all that stuff is actually a... Um, ambassador for the spoils. Uh, I as well am an ambassador ambassador for the spoils here in Indianapolis and uh, I think that this game could be a heavy competitor with Magic the Gathering and um, uh, the spoils and all those other other TCGs out there. I think some of the smaller ones uh, that, that are you know have a, only a little bit of um, following are probably really not gonna make a difference but this one's definitely like smaller ones like Pokemon Pokemon's a huge one Pokemon's a big monster no, no one's heard of it Magic, right? <laughs> Magic the Gathering's a monster um, I mean it's it's amazing to see new games that are the same idea but new mechanics being implemented into the card games and, and everything and this one was really cool because you're What's a your, new mechanic for you in this game? Well, for this one, it was actually taking your ruler and resting him to pull a um, stone from your stone deck. So it's actually having the energy source in one deck and your main deck in another one where Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, Spoils, all of those games have them shuffled together where this game had them separated and was a really unique uh, Way to, get way to have it set up and mechanic wise and and uh, it was kind of nice to be like I know I have this many I know when I can get them how I can get them and how quickly I can get them so obviously I'm once per turn but you'll know every turn you're gonna get that one more um, as long as you use your ruler that way so it's it's not like like magic and Yu-Gi-Oh and I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh uses an energy implement, but let's just keep it to spoils and uh, Magic the Gathering. Like, you know that Magic, you have mana, you know how many mana is in your deck, but you don't know when they're going to get there. <clears throat> you may know how often, like every third card or whatever like that, but you might not know exactly when that card's going to pop up and all that stuff, where in Force of Will, it's always right there in that separate deck, and you just be like, oh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to rest my character, my ruler, and then get myself uh, another stone. So that's kind of cool. Now, when you start mixing the two two different factions or three different factions, you won't know what stone you're going to get. But like, for instance, these two starter decks, we already knew that there was only 10 fire for me and 10 light for Anna. And we knew that those energies were there. So uh, what was new for you? Um, I didn't think about that, but... For me, it's, I mean, the only thing that was really different was the 4,000 life, and, I mean, I really have only played Magic, like, once or twice, so I can't really yeah. compare that much to it. I played Spoils, and then you have 25 life, but it plays in the same time, it's just a higher amount, but it, Well, it's. I didn't mind playing the game, but for me, it felt like any other CCG. Yeah, and then the one thing that I I don't like is that they say you've got 4,000 points of health where, and I think it's just a personal preference, I think that that's, somebody might look at that and be like, oh, I don't want to play the game, that's way too high of a health, not knowing that everything is an influence of hundreds games. and thousands. Right. Where if they'd have taken that one zero off of the end and knocked all the cards down with that just only one less zero health. on the end like start with 400 health and then everything that does 600 damage do 60 instead of and then do the or implements of tens instead 40. of thousands or hundreds or 40 damage right yeah that's what i'm saying like across the board if they just took it down to tenths and hundredths instead of hundredths and thousands i mean they're not going to change it clearly it's in print and yeah and it's, and it's been working for I mean, however long it's been out. I don't I mind playing with Tim. He likes playing these types of CCGs stuff. The only one I really enjoy playing and like to invest in is Pokemon. <laughs> she says it really quietly, like. <laughs> That's the one I like the most. That's the one I play and invest in. Um, I, I think probably second is Spoils. 
Well, but for a long time, he had to make me all, play spoils. But, but it's just also, not my kind of game. There's also the argument of that when, yes, Pokemon and Magic and and at least those two I know do that rotation of once it's so old, it's not allowed to be into the tournaments where spoils. I don't know if they have that. Uh, considering they've only got a few expansions, so I'm I'm, seasons, I'm not right? thinking seasons seeds. expansions, but like yeah, seeds. Um, that's just and we're getting kind of I'll off of it. force of will, but it's like uh, it's, it, it's Pokemon doesn't. Yes, they have that rotation. Magic has a rotation, but I feel like. The easiest game to stay into is Pokemon because nothing changes about it. It's just new characters with new attacks and maybe do more damage or less damage. I have cards that are new but do less than what the old cards do. And now it's getting to the point where we don't, I don't, I wanted to do tournaments and then I started reading the tournament rules and how it works and you have to have the newest copy of the card and all that for Pokemon. So if you have like, a Taurus from 1995, that card's basically just might as well throw it in the trash and it doesn't, it's not going to help you at all because you have to have in a 2015 a copy of Taurus. Yes, in tournament. And if you're playing with your friends, then that's the probably the easiest card game to get somebody into. I'm hoping that Force of Will, when they get built up and more popular and start coming out with packs and stuff, that they'll allow all the cards to be into it because, like Magic, I don't want to invest into Magic because it's just, you just keep buying cards and keep buying cards and keep buying cards and you gotta buy the new stuff to stay in the tournaments and do all this other stuff. And let's say if you put all this money into it, you're not a pro player, you only go to one tournament a year, like a Gen Con or something. And, you know, because, you know, everybody, I understand everyone's got a budget, so you can't just dump your money into it. So I'm hoping that Force of Will will stay to where if you, you know, buy expansions outside of the base sets then that'll be fine and I'm not trying to stab at Magic the Gathering or Pokemon on that rule ways but I know that it's because it's been going over so many years it's probably had to go that way because I don't know maybe they built a card that was going to be way too overpowered to work with an old card or something like that and so they had to eliminate that whole whole bracket of cards but like and we used to talk about Magic the Gathering all the time and talk down about it. So what we would do, what we did was we bought cards and then uh, played the game and everything so that we could have a better opinion about all the different types of games. So. And we didn't talk down about it because we knew specific things. It was just the money pit thing. Yeah. But, um, but as far as Force of Will goes, I don't mind playing it. So I really like the game. I hope you guys can go out and get a base copy of it or buy a deck and then have a friend buy a deck and then go on with or it because this, is, a this is just the yeah this is the double pack but enough for two players it is available I know at Toys R Us because that's where I saw it and then I talked to the guys there at the booth and they hooked us up so um, we hope that you guys like the video and we hope that you guys subscribe and follow us here on YouTube follow us on Twitter at Geeked Up Gaming 1 and also go to our webpage and check that out at geekdubgaming.weekly.com. So as always, I'm Tim. I'm Anna. And this is the Geek Dub Game Review Group, and this is Force of Will. Oh,